Welcome back to the channel folks, or if you're new to the channel, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. We're obviously a running related YouTube channel and the channel features all kinds of content from kit reviews, honest, genuine shoe reviews, race day videos. We also do some travel videos, but recently I've been doing a series of videos on the channel where we take you out on some of our chain training routes. I live down in beautiful Cornwall, so we've got some epic trails to run. So we take you out, we show you the sites, and we try and answer some of the really popular questions that we get answered on the channel. So we have driven up the line a bit today to St Agnes. As you can see out there, we've got some stunning coast path that we're gonna head on down to. But we've also got behind me, Agnes Beacon. I do a lot of training out here because the trails tend to be dry most of the year round. But also you've got this beacon, which if you run it from Chapelport Beach all the way up to the summit, you get a 660 foot climb. So great if I'm training for any mountain races, I can get lots of elevation in. To be honest, it's the only thing that's really missing in Cornwall for my trail running. If they could drop a thousand meter summit in the middle of Hale Towns, I would have everything I need right on my doorstep. So we've had a bit of a stretch, we're a bit loose now. I think we've got everything we need. So let's get out on them trails and let's get running. So we got a bit of tarmac to navigate before we get down the coast path, but then once we're there, it is a stunning section of coast path. There's lots of old mining chimneys and engine houses on the coast path, so it really is a stunning place to run. It really is a section of coast path that has pretty much everything. It's got some really challenging ascents, some pretty technical rocky descents, but it's also got some real lovely runnable flowing trails where you can really pick up the pace. Right, let's get down there and I'll show you what I mean. So good to be back out on this section of the coast path. I haven't run out here for months and months. In fact, I think the last time I ran out here was when we did Freedom Racing's vertical kilometer. And that was ages ago. If you haven't checked out that video, definitely worth going and checking out because it highlights a lot of these awesome trails around this area. Right, it's a bit sheltered here. Let's answer the first question. And it's a question that we get asked a lot at Run For Adventure. And it is, what nutrition do I take when I'm running a marathon? It's what I've always used from my first marathon up till present day. I tend to take a gel every four miles. I've used torque gels for the last seven or eight years. And a torque gel will give you 120 calories. I've always carried all my nutrition with me whenever I've done a marathon. So I'll run with a belt and I'll have all my gels within that belt. And in total, I'll carry six gels. So one every four miles, but I'll always carry one spare. So seven gels in that belt. In total, when you add them calories up, that's about seven or 800 calories. And if you think over the course of a marathon, I'm probably gonna burn about three, three and a half thousand calories. So you can see why it's super important to get some calories in your body. You're still gonna be in a big deficit, but you're not gonna completely crash and hit that wall. So like I said, I tend to carry seven gels. I'll take six of them gels, one every four miles, and I'll have one as spare, which to be honest, I've had to use quite a few times in quite a few marathons. So make sure you're well practiced when it comes to your nutrition for marathon day. Get them calories in because you'll get to that finish line feeling super, super strong and you'll have a great day. Right, let's get running. So this is what I love about this section of the coast path. You can see it's pretty rocky, pretty dry underfoot. And in the winter time, I spend a lot of time out this way. When I'm fed up of slogging through mud and slipping and sliding, you can come out here winter and it drains so well, it's still pretty dry apart from the odd puddle. And obviously the other bonus is you've got these epic views to look at. I mean, how amazing is this? Just another amazing place to come and run in Cornwall. We are so lucky, so fortunate. I don't know whether you noticed just then, I'm actually in the Hoka Rincon 2s. Uh, we're just getting the mileage in for a review that is coming out on the channel soon. In fact, this is probably a bit weird because this is going to go out after the review. 
So you've probably already seen the review and you probably already know the Rincon 2 is a fantastic shoe. It's not a trail shoe, but like I said, it's so dry and compact out here. This time of year, you can run out here in a road shoe, it's fine. And when we head off up to the beacon, there's quite a bit of tarmac to do. So I thought it was a good option. So question number two, and this is super popular on the channel, is how do I keep my feet dry in wet conditions? And quite simply, the answer is I don't. I'm not a big lover of waterproof shoes. I don't see how something can be waterproof when it's got a big hole in the top where your foot's got to go in. I've also heard some nightmare stories when it comes to waterproof socks. I had a friend who used them in a race once. First time he'd ever used them, it was very wet, wintry conditions, and the whole sole of his foot delaminated while he was wearing them socks. So I stay away from waterproof socks. I stay away from waterproof shoes because if a shoe is lined with Gore-Tex, you're gonna lose a lot of breathability and your feet are gonna sweat and get hot anyway. Plus, if water gets into that shoe, which it will, especially if you're going over ankle deep, then that water cannot get out of that shoe. It is completely encased with Gore-Tex and it's gonna be like sloshing around and running in a swimming pool. So what I tend to do is I just get wet feet. I've run the arc four times and I haven't used waterproof shoes or waterproof socks. I've just looked after my feet. I've made sure if I'm having any issues I address them as quick as I possibly can and if I've got a crew with me I'll have lots of dry pairs of shoes and dry pairs of socks to get changed into. Obviously if you're doing a wet race and you don't have a crew and you don't have that option you've just got to take care of your feet at every opportunity but I personally think when it comes to waterproof socks and waterproof shoes if you've tested them and you've tried them and it works fantastic but don't leave it to the last minute don't use them for the first time in a race and personally for me i'm going to stay clear of them because i think it's a big risk and you're taking a gamble See what I mean by aggressive climbs and rocky descents. Um, if you head over that way, you can see that big climb you've got to go over the top. And again, you might have recognized them steps we just came down from the VK again, because this just up here is where Driftwood Spa is, and this is where the vertical kilometer begins. So this is where the vertical kilometer starts, right here. It is a fantastic race. If you're ever down in Cornwall, check out Freedom Racing VK. Um, we've done a video on it, so go and check that out as well and I'll leave a link in the description so you can find out a bit more about the race. Right, we've done a turn around. We are heading back up, back to the beacon. We'll go up to the beacon and we'll show you the stunning 360 degree views from the top. Back up the steps we go. Woo. Get the old quads burning. What a view behind me though. Just awesome. What a place to run. So we are back on the hard stuff, back on the tarmac, and we are heading off up to St Agnes Beacon. A lot of the local trail runners come out here and rep the beacon. It's one place we can get a fair bit of elevation in. So we've 
made it to the top of the beacon and it is a bit blowy up here and I can't believe how dark it's getting, the clouds are rolling in so we're going to be quick, it's time for question number three and again a question I get asked a lot on the channel is how do I look after myself, how do I stay injury free? And this has always been a problem for me, you know, I'm not that type of runner who can just run, run any distance, run any weekly mileage and not have any problems. I tend to have niggles and I just have to manage my body well. Uh, a little bit of history back in 2009, I had to have a, a pretty major hip operation. No false hip or anything like that, I just had to have things reshaped and set at a different angle. But hip fully dislocated, put back together and I couldn't run for a whole year. I was told by the doctors that maybe I shouldn't run that much anymore and try and get off the hard stuff off the tarmac. So this is where I started running on the trails and where I found the love for trail running. So you could look at the hip operation as a really positive thing and it made me discover the beautiful trails we have in Cornwall. And to be honest, I haven't left them since. So how do I keep injury free or as injury free as I possibly can? Well, before every run, I tend to spend five minutes on the foam roller and on the massage board. Uh, lower legs is where I tend to have my issues so shins calves I get the massage ball in my hip just loosen that hip off as well and I do that for every single run a good five minutes of rolling and then I do some loose stretching so no deep stretching before the run that all comes afterwards but before the run just lower legs calves shins feet hips you know basic stuff but just loosen the body off before I start running and then when I get back from a run same kind of thing I finish my run I do a good five or ten minutes of stretching in. again a real good deep stretch all over and then I get back on them rollers for five minutes again quads hamstrings glutes calves shins all the areas that again I tend to struggle with niggles and if if I don't keep that up then I will have problems I want to run so I do all them little things I take the time to manage my body and then last and definitely not least is I have regular sports massage and I've had regular sports massage for about 12 years uh, and 10 of them years have been with Kate Skipper she basically has kept me running for 10 years kept me going and she knows my body as well as I do and I've learned a lot of the things I know now of how to manage my body from her so yeah regular sports massage I couldn't recommend it enough find someone really good a recommendation from another runner you know and book in regular appointments try and go regularly keep on top of it keep things loose so yeah roll in stretch in before and after every run and then regular treatments with my sports massage therapist Kate Skipper probably every two weeks three weeks Weeks I go and have treatment is what keeps me running injury free. Touch wood. Right, so that's the run done. Hope you enjoyed seeing the route, but We've actually got a runner out doing the North Coast Challenge at the moment. Um, I've done a video on the North Coast Challenge. It's a challenge myself and Steve White set up many, many years ago. But we've got a runner taking it on at the moment as we speak. So I'm going to jump in the van. We're going to head off down the road. We're going to go and see if we can find her, catch up with her and see how she's doing. Right, I think we found her. So I'm just going to park up and then we'll go and see if we can catch up with her. Here she is. <laughs> how, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. Her legs have gone over. It's been, um, yeah, it's been a bit, yeah. We got lost for a long time on day one. That was really difficult. Really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, it was. Was it low cloud? Yeah. We got to the same point three times. That was quite a low point. Easy to do, haven't we? Over two hours. Oh, 
that was so good to catch up with Tracy on her North Coast Challenge attempt. I've left a link in the description if you want to find out any more about the North Coast Challenge, uh, a challenge that myself and Steve White set up years ago. Please click on that link and do so. You can see she's still looking super, super positive, big smile on her face, and she's moving well considering she's over 100 miles into her challenge. She's been going since Friday at 7 p.m and she's heading off into her third night on the Cornish coast path and she's probably gonna finish early hours of tomorrow morning. So stellar effort, well done Tracy. Go and get that finish at Land's End, you deserve it. But that is another wrap on a video guys. I hope you can still see me. It's getting pretty gloomy out here now. You can tell summer is almost over and we're moving into autumn, but hope you enjoyed coming out and seeing some of the beautiful sights around St Agnes and up onto the beacon. Uh, it's a place I love to come running, awesome trails. If you're ever in Cornwall, come and hit these trails. They are super fun to run on. But this is quite a big video for the channel. This is our 100th video. I can't quite believe I'm saying that, but we have made 100 videos on the channel. We always had a long-term plan for Run For Adventure, so we're just over two years in and we've done 100 videos. I think we're getting better at what we do. You know, the plan was to bring you guys interesting awesome honest running related content and i think we're doing that and also to bring it to you um you know as professionally as we can on a very 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 small budget so we're striving to get better always we always want to bring you guys better content and i wonder where we'll be in another hundred videos time so we just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel everybody who watches the videos and everybody who takes the time to comment and leave positive comments as well it really does mean the world to us but for now guys thanks for watching we will definitely see you in the next video but as always stay safe and keep on running